the Rubik's Cube world record has just been broken. It is now 4.74 seconds. Check it out. Sam! Yeah! What? That is the fastest any human has ever solved a Rubik's Cube. It was set on the weekend just gone when I was lucky enough to actually be at the UK Rubik's Championship where this record was not set. It was actually set at a competition in Indonesia by a guy called Mats Volk who is from the Netherlands but he didn't come to the UK Championship because he's actually studying in Singapore at the moment. Not that I'm bitter I missed out or anything and what a phenomenal time it is under five seconds he managed to solve a Rubik's cube and set the world record faster than I can tell you that someone has set a new world record so check it out this is my introduction from the beginning of the video you're currently enjoying and this is Matt's setting the world record watch the Rubik's cube world record has just been broken in now 4.74 seconds. See, the Rubik's Cube is solved faster than I can tell you about it. Now, if you want to know how it was actually done, this is the actual scramble that he started with at the beginning of the solve. This is what he was faced with when he set the world record. And at the end of the video, I'm going to have a breakdown of how he actually solved this Rubik's Cube in such a tiny, tiny amount of time. But before then, I thought it would be nice to actually have a talk to the man who set the record. And I'm actually joined here by uh, Mats Volk. Uh, hello, Mats, how are you doing? I'm good, good, thanks. How are you? I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, you've had a more successful Rubik's Cube competition over the weekend than I did. <laughs> so how's, have you been doing nonstop media since then? Are you know, uh, are you now? Yeah, I had a lot of media inquiries, uh, like from all around the world. But it also had two tasks last week, which I had to prepare for a little more. So it was uh, completely chaos and uh, only a couple of hours of sleep every night. But it's a uh, good fun. Did you uh, have to fly and do any interviews or you just did them all over the Skype? Or did you have to say, yeah. I'm sorry, I've got a test? Uh, I stayed here in Singapore. Like, uh, well, I was playing back on Monday, but we missed our flight because uh, we had a couple of beers on Sunday night. And then we uh, woke up too late. But uh, like I've been doing a so lot of interviews. So the post Rubik's Cube <laughs> celebrations were too much. So good. Uh, but yeah, I did a lot of interviews over Skype, uh, calling, and uh, also some just like over the email. So now, when you actually broke the, were you going into the championship thinking, you know, I think I'm at record-breaking level, or did it come as a surprise to you as well? It actually came as a big, big surprise. Um, well, it's, it's obviously the world record, and it like it's not easy to beat that because if it was easy, then it would have. Ref we would have already been broken. Already been beaten, yeah. So I think on Earth there are like maybe 10 people who are capable of breaking the world record. And after that, it's just a matter of like going to a competition, uh, like being in the right shape, like having a little bit of luck and doing it there right on spot. And I was fortunate enough to do that last weekend. So actually, when you got the scramble you were given, did you look at it and go, I'm in for a shot with a very fast time? Or did it just work out very nicely towards the end? Uh, both. I, okay, so you probably noted as well, like you solve a cross first um, yep. on that scramble. Like I usually start with blue, but I looked a bit through the other colors and it turned out that green was only three moves away from the cross being solved, which is... Yeah, I saw it was a three twist cross. Yeah. Yeah. This is pretty nice. And I was already able to see, I think, two pairs during the inspection. So that's like not bad at all. Like you can do like maybe 50 moves after the cross like straight away. So I knew like it was going to yep. be a pretty decent time. And then I had a little bit of luck because I was able to uh, four skip the OLO, like the, the sixth out of the seventh step. And then I was lucky with the PLL skip in the end. I recreated your soul because I looked up online what the scramble yeah. was. At the end, I were you looking ahead and saving moves because i was like well hang on that corner and edge hasn't gone in yet <laughs> but you've put it you've parked it somewhere else yeah. knowing you can skip orientating the final layer exactly if you put it in at a different time yeah so that's that's the difference between because a lot of people practice and get down to about 30 seconds on a rubik's cube or possibly down but to get sub 10 second i mean sub five second times mm. 
you've got to be thinking on the fly about being, you know, doing things slightly different earlier to set up some efficiencies later. Yeah, yeah, but still, you don't have to do like very fancy stuff like I did. Like, do do a forced OLL skip is like not required at all to be sub 10. Like, with just like all the regular outs, you should be able to like easily get up to eight seconds. So, when did you first get into Rubik's cubing? Like, what 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 got you to your first competition? Um, well, so I started uh, when I was 11, when nine years ago. Uh, I was still in my last year of elementary school, and my teacher, she brought the cube in the class, and I was interested. I thought it was like an uh, impossible challenge, so I was like pushing myself to learn that, and then after a week, I was able to solve first the two layers by myself, like without any help, and then uh, I went to my mom, because I wasn't able to solve the last layer, and it turned out that she still had a book from the 80s that fully describes oh, how wow. to solve the Ruby's cube, so she gave that to me. And I started reading and reading, and I think it took me another week, I think, before I was able to solve the Rubik's Cube. And it was just like as slow as anyone else, maybe like 10 minutes, maybe even worse. Yeah. And after that, I just kept practicing, kept practicing. And I kind of knew there were Rubik's Cube competitions, but at that moment, I was not like fully aware of that. And then it was uh, like by, sort of by accident, I went to this uh, puzzle fair, and it happened that the Dutch National Championships were held over there. Yeah, like I didn't want to enter first, but then there were some people at the competition, like they convinced me to eventually do that. Maybe you know, actually, Eric Ackersdijk. He was the guy yes. who had the world record in 2008 with 708 seconds. Yes. I met him at that competition, and then he convinced me of like actually competing at a competition. So that's quite well, he, I mean, he didn't know what he was starting. <laughs> He's like, well, now you actually have your own range of rooms. I do, yeah. Course. This is one of it. Oh, right. How did that happen? It's a Volk 3. All right, that's one there. Um, so I got invited last year to come to the Chinese championship by this company called Chi Movanger. And then yep. uh, I went to the factory, their office, and we had a lot of good talks. And then they came up with the idea of making the Vogue 3, like my Rubik's Cube. So we discussed a lot on like what, in my opinion, would be the perfect Rubik's Cube. And then they sent me a yep. couple of designs, and I said, well, okay, this is good, this is bad, this is good. They said a couple of more designs, and it takes quite a long time to make those molds. So it took us like five months after the first design and the actual release. But now I'm uh, I'm really happy how it turned out. Um, I used this cube to set the world record, so uh, that's really good, I think. And uh, I've only had oh, there you go. So from you got, other people. I know how you feel about getting stuff made because I run a website called Maskia, where we make ridiculous mathematical toys, mm -hmm. and so it's a long, slow process getting stuff yeah. made. But I have just ordered some, I got some Volk 3 cubes that were put on mass gear. You did? So I only got a couple, but I thought if people watch this and they want to get one, oh, that'd be they great. can go on to mass gear. And I now stock your cube. Oh, so you, you are the only cube on mass gear. <laughs> yeah. That's what an honor. What, you know, you thought winning the world record was exciting. My goodness, being, being on mass gear. <laughs> I was about to say that, like, I'll send you a couple of these cubes, but since you already ordered them, Ah, I could have got them for free. Yeah. Unbelievable. Matt. So, ah, one day. So, uh, thank you very much, Matt Svolk, for spending some time explaining the Rubik's Cube. Thanks for having me. It was good. All right, see you soon. All right, cheers. So, how did Matt take this scrambled Rubik's Cube and solve it so efficiently? Sadly, even if you take the footage from his solve and slow it down to one quarter of its normal speed, he's still moving too fast for the video to be that insightful. Instead, I've done some research online. That's how I found the exact scramble he started with. I have also found a list of the individual twists he did to complete the solve. So this is my breakdown of how you solve a Rubik's Cube in under five seconds. If you'd like to play along, get yourself a Rubik's Cube with the green facing you and red on the right. This is now the scramble we have to do. If you're not familiar with the notation, you've got V that represents the back face, F for front, R for right, L for left face, finally U for up and D for the down face. So where you see B2, that means you've got to get the back face and rotate it twice. We've now got F2, so that's the front face twice. And then where you've just got one letter, D, that means you rotate that face uh, in a clockwise direction. So D is a single clockwise move there. You've now got two, 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 left, two, a single clockwise move, right, two, back, two, facing two, up, two, up, two, left, two. Uh, now back is a single where you see a dash 
means you go anti-clockwise. It's a single anti-clockwise move on the back. Left two, right two, down two, anti-clockwise move, up two, left two, up single anti-clockwise, right anti-clockwise, facing clockwise, right clockwise. And what you end up here is the scramble that he actually faced in the competition. So if you have a look at the mat, you can see it's positioned like, uh, there we go, like that. That's the same uh, arrangement. Okay, now we can actually do the solve. So we started with the orange one facing him, blue on top and white over on the right. We're gonna do the left anti-clockwise a single twist. We're then gonna take the down clockwise and then the right a complete two rotations. And you think, well, what does that achieve? We'll have a look on the bottom, there's a cross. So this is the cross setup, and not only are these green cross ones in the right position, but they're already lined up with the center ones on all the other faces. So in those three twists, he's already got the first step completed. There are now four steps and each one of those steps fills in a bottom corner and matching edge. So we'll do the first one first. So that is a right twist. So that corner piece has now been put in to match the bottom and that edge piece is in there as well. The same thing should happen when we do the next one. I'm just blindly following along. Oh, now the lowercase d means instead of rotating down anti-clockwise by itself, you actually rotate it with the layer above it as well. So you get that. And if we have a look around again, we will see, ah, over here, here it is. So now that, so as well as the first corner over there, we've got this corner is put in place and the next edge up. Up next, that Y means we have to reorientate the cube clockwise in the vertical Y axis like so. And so if you have a look, there we go. All right, so we've now got those are in, those are in, those are in. All we have to do are the last two over here. So, right, let's do them. We should have all four of these. Those are in place, those are in place, those are in place, and oh, they're not. Now, this is what threw me the first time I followed these steps because I expected to see the yellow, red, green pair put in over here. They're not here, they're all the way around over here. There they are. What are they doing there? They should be in here. Well, in this incredibly clever move, Matz has paired them up. He's also managed to pair these up and he's made his future life a whole lot easier. So let's, let's carry on with the steps as shown. So his next moves are, and watch this, this is incredible. So he's gone R prime there, U there, R prime, face right, face prime, it's all cut and starting to come together here. U, so that is a single twist over there, and then a right, and that's pretty much it. It's now a single U, and it's solved. So by not blindly putting in the fourth pair straight away, but rather by hiding it somewhere else, he was able to set up and save a whole lot of orientating and positioning the last layer. Incredible. If you'd like to learn more about competitive Rubik's Cube solving, I was actually at the UK Championship to make a YouTube video about it. So you can check that out there. If it's not available yet, because we're still frantically editing it, which is very much the case at the moment, then you can subscribe to my channel and you'll find out as soon as it is available, as well as all sorts of other ridiculous maths related videos. Quick thanks for this video. Obviously, thank you very much to Matt Svolk for being interviewed by me, as well as letting me use the footage from his world record solve. Please do check out his YouTube channel and his Facebook. I'll put the links down below. Thanks to the people on the Cubers subreddit. They're the ones who reverse engineered what the scramble was and how Matt's actually solved it. I'll have a link to the discussion thread around his original video down below. And finally, thanks to Maskier, which is effectively thanking myself and some chump called Steve Mould. So we managed to get a few of the Volk 3 cubes on there. If they prove popular, we'll get some more in, but please do check it out. We have loads of other fantastic maths toys.